posted a poll over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram asking what photo that you guys liked the most and also what I used to take those photos with. One with the smartphone and one with the actual camera. And I was just working on a post for Instagram, but I figured that this would be a good, interesting poll for you guys. And once I got some of these answers, once I saw some of your thoughts, I was like, I gotta make a video about this. So before we get into that, I wanna encourage you to subscribe to this channel so you can see more videos like this. If you like this video, please thumbs up and also share it with your friends and family. As I said, I was working on this post and I used my phone, which was a Pixel 3 XL, and the camera is a Sony a7 III with a 25 millimeter Betis Zeiss lens. Altogether, the camera setup was pretty much about $3,000. This is a $1,000 phone, so either way, expensive setups if you think about it. But I was really curious to see if I would end up liking or using the picture that I took with my Pixel 3 XL or with my Sony camera. Over on Facebook, we had 82 votes, 59% liked the first one, choice A, and the 41 liked the choice B. Twitter had 55 votes and 65% like choice A and 35% like choice B. This choice, the first choice, 46% of the people thought it was the smartphone and 54 thought it was the camera. This one, I can't see the results for some reason, so I don't know why it's not showing it to me, but those were the poll results. The camera that was used for the image with the carton, the cookies, and then the milk was taken with the Pixel 3 XL, this guy right here and the other one with the Sony a7 III with the 25 millimeter lens. Now that you know which camera was used, were you wrong, were you right? What's your thoughts if you got it wrong? Are you surprised that a camera on the smartphone could take something as good as what it did? Or did you think that the Sony camera didn't do as well? I know that there are some responses about how they like different arrangements than the other, and I did agree with a lot of that. The photo that I actually ended up using for the post was the one that I took with the Pixel 3 XL. Going back over on Facebook, there was plenty of people that thought that B was the phone, and that was not, it was the camera, so that was pretty interesting to me. A lot of people did say that they liked the composition of A versus B, but they liked the coloration, the editing of B, so if I were to use the composition of A, but with the Sony camera, it would have been their preferred shot. I wanna go back over some of the responses and that was definitely one of them. Definitely one of the things that I picked up on was that a lot of people liked A's composition, but B's look. One said that A looks more natural light, so phone. And the thing too is, is that I used Lightroom Mobile to edit the photo on my phone and then I used the desktop Lightroom app to edit the photo with the Sony camera. So both used Lightroom both use the same presets. I did some adjusting, some exposure, shadows, and all that kind of stuff too. So just kind of keep that in mind. This wasn't just raw right at the camera. First of all, like I use a flat profile for my Sony camera, so it would not have even looked anything similar to what an auto would do with this. I could do both autos, but I just don't like to shoot auto anything on my, at least my Sony camera. With my phone, I use a lot of auto kind of stuff, but what's cool about a Pixel 3 XL is that it gives you a raw file as well and it helps you edit stuff to get it to where you want it to look like. That was a sidetrack. But I did also notice that a lot of the professional photographers or videographers got the answers right as far as what was used for each photo. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So good job guys, you know your stuff. I did use the Pixel 3 XL's portrait mode to take that photo. One of my favorite responses over on Facebook was from my uncle Bernie, and he said, well, it looks like photo B was taken with a wide angle 25 millimeter lens due to the convergence of the vertical lines. That's a good analysis right there. And although I like the photo A the best, it may well be because you need to get so close to the subject for a comparable composition. He went on to say in a follow-up comment saying that, I think a good photographer could take great photos with virtually any camera and phones now do a great job. And just for background purposes, Uncle Bernie was a professional or is a professional photographer. He doesn't do it as much, but that was his career after his service with the military. So that's what he did for a living with some old school tech. I mean, nothing near like what we have these days. And he did a fantastic job with my wedding, so I'm definitely appreciative of the work that he did then as well. I like the analysis that he provided with that, with how the vertical lines and, and stuff like that. Another way that you could tell too is that with the Pixel 3 XL, the portrait mode, you get a hard cut off edge with the subject that's in the foreground or whatever that you're focused on. With the Sony camera, you're gonna have more of a natural kind of roll off versus just a hard cut off. So that's something that you can use for future trying to decipher which is which or what camera took what. Hopping on over to Twitter, Jeremy, bro, oh man, like your response is funny to me. He says, I think A is the Sony and B is the smartphone. Reason is I think the portrait mode would struggle with multiple objects spread apart, but the glass is flawless on A, which portrait mode doesn't do typically. So to your surprise, the Pixel 3 XL actually does a good job 
with multiple subjects in the foreground. I thought it did a pretty good job too. I didn't retake that photo too many times. I just kind of changed some angles, a little bit of repositioning and stuff like that. But it nailed the portrait mode pretty much every time. So I was pretty happy with those results. It's pretty awesome that this phone can produce those kind of results. And it's not even for a person, it's for these objects, not a, yeah, that's really cool to me. Anyways, moving on to some other replies. Again, some more composition feedback. Appreciate it. I'm going to use that kind of feedback in the future for sure. All right. So what's your final thoughts about this video? Did you enjoy it? I'm definitely going to be making more like this. This was a lot of fun to me. I like seeing all the reactions, the analytics, the composition feedback, all that stuff was a lot of fun for me. It was enjoyable. It's entertaining to watch people get the answers wrong as bad as that sounds. It was also entertaining to see some of the professionals chime in to see what they thought took each photo and what they liked, just the feedback from them as well. All right guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos like this. You'll be the first ones to know about it if you hit that bell and if YouTube actually pushes the notifications to you guys. I hope that you guys have a great one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next video.